Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily. Now training videos are some of our best viewed content and we always make sure we get the top experts in the world to give advice to you guys. So today we're looking back at training movies from 2018 and we're kicking off with the time we went to Tom Randall's Training Cellar of Doom. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, so coming into the room, uh, straight away you've got the first crack feature running across the room uh, at a sort of head height. Yeah, so this section here is actually the original simulator that I first ever built, and this used to be in my living room in a flat that I lived in Sheffield maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is the green spit replica, and that's kind of more or less where it all really started from. Looking at it, you've got various features bolted on the sides, so there's a few hand holds around the edges, but the crack itself is what, like, Normal sort of hand jam. Yeah, this is bomber hands. That's what we, that's what we call this bomber hands or, or a belay. <laughs> um, and then on the outside, we've got all these edges and crimps, and those are actually mainly on there because when I had this crack across the, and it was right across the middle of the living room in my flat, mm. was I had a lot of comp climbers used to come around my house at the time, and I needed to put something on it that was appealing for them to all have a go. Okay. Uh, so that's why those are on there, and they've kind of stayed as a historic uh, artifact. Let's imagine I'm climbing along here. I'm underneath, 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 and then into this room. Yeah, look, crux through the doorway. So you actually come through the doorway itself, reach through, and then continue on. Yeah, yeah, so uh, this is the first, I don't know, 20 feet of hand crack, and then comes through here into another continuation of hand crack. The sizes get a little bit more tricky on this side. And then that leads us into the main off-widthing area where Pete and I spent a lot of time training for Century Crack. And over there, um, you know, we've got all different sizes of off-widths and the Hastinator and everything. So it's, it's kind of like a combination of all different widths and training tools if you want to be, you know, good at crack climbing. <laughs> He's recently redone that cellar, so I'm looking forward to seeing the changes. Now, one of the films we put up on the main Epic TV channel featured Richie Patterson and his challenge to go from 7B plus to 8B plus sport climbing in a year. It required a huge amount of training to complete his goal. It's possibly a midlife crisis. Come on. <laughs> 27. Oh my God. I'm not confident, but where there's a will, there's a way. We'll see. While I was back in England, I managed to persuade Steve McClure to come out and help me choose my 8B+. That was brilliant. He was coming out at the end of September. It got me really psyched to climb hard and get fit over the summer. My finger injury started healing quite well. The core training Ollie sent me was working and I was getting fitter and stronger. I was even doing 7C, 7C+, and not even getting pumped. The thought of him coming out, I must admit, kept me going through some pretty boring hours of training on my own at the wall as well. Unfortunately, like everything with me, didn't seem to last. On a scheduled rest day when, as Tom said, I should have been focusing on the goal, I managed to get out, go out climbing, drink too much coffee and get psyched. Jumping on the 7C plus that I shouldn't have been on, I tore my shoulder. Ah! Oh, fuck! Steve arrived a month later and I was totally bummed that it didn't look like I'd better climb with him. After four weeks off, I'd only just started training again, so I thought I'd start by getting his advice on that. So, uh, yeah, this is where I train. Um, it's pretty good, really. I mean, owned by the local club. Uh, the, what's the word you're looking for? It's um, old school. That's the word. Suits me perfectly, then, I think. Being old. <laughs> and school. Go on. Get those old muscles working. So if that if that's the goal of the of the training yeah. circuit, the what the grade is not relevant. Right. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah, you work out what you're trying to train, and you work out how to train it, and you set something to do that. Yeah. 
progression from this circuit is just make the feet make the feet bad and make the make it more body oriented. Oh, then, but then you're bringing in your core. Yeah, yeah stuff okay. like that. Just, okay, just, that that makes sense. Because actually, you're right. I need to just think about it. Is it doing what it's supposed to do? So that's uh, that's a good tip, actually. Yeah. With, with the training that I do, I have absolutely no idea about what grid anything is at all. That series is called Old Dog New Tricks, and if you want to see if Richie managed to achieve his goal, then make sure you click on the link in the description below. Now, Cafe Craft is an incredible gym in Germany, and we visited them a lot, mainly for training series. So this next little clip is when we spent time with Dickie Korb and German athlete Christoph Hanker to find some training tips. Hello and welcome to part two of our training series here at Cafe Craft. I'm Dickie Korb, and I work with climbers all over the world to prepare them for their hardest projects. Having a strong core is essential for keeping you on the wall, especially when it's overhanging. Here are three exercises which will make a big difference to your core strength. Adjust the sling trainer until it is low to the ground. Place both feet in the slings. Get into a push-up position. Raise both legs up towards your chest. Keep your arms straight. Make sure your back is straight and not curved. Squeeze your glutes to achieve this. Adjust the rings so they are parallel to each other. Hang upside down with one leg extended. Keep your body tense and engage your core. Slowly lower down and sideways until your body is horizontal. Hold for between 2 to 5 seconds depending on your strength. Make sure your head does not move close to your chest. If you struggle, get a friend to support your leg. Now it's all very well for these pros to spend hours training, but how do you do it if you have a nine to five job? We got a lady called Lisa Adef to write a series of articles for us and do an interview on Climbing Daily about just exactly that. How do you fit a training schedule into normal life? I've been climbing for eight years um, and right from the word go I think it became a huge part of my life. I think it's it's a very addictive sport and I tend to spend three to four sessions a week training in the winter and then maybe three sessions in the summer with outdoor sessions. I'm more of a limestone climber so I don't climb so much in the winter also I don't really like being cold but um, I'm currently training for a font trip which is a week from now. When I was first thinking about starting training, um, my boyfriend and I had a look around and at the time Lattice was Tom Randall coaching and the thing we really liked about it was that he seemed to have this really scientific approach. I've, I've got a science background so I'm really interested in knowing why we do what we do um, to improve. So the Lattice, the Tom Randall training really appealed because he had this assessment that he did to assess your strengths and your weaknesses. and. Then he made a training plan which was very customised to you. So at the time it was Tom Randall, but he had that approach that Lattice now has to assessing you very scientifically. I tend to train during weeknights and then there's usually one weeknight free um, and that would be when I would try and catch up with friends. Weekends, um, ideally there's a training day free at the weekend. If I visit family or if I visit non-climbing friends, I try and avoid climbing because I think 
when I when I was younger I used to climb whenever I went to see my parents but I think it's better for me to separate those two and just do things properly when I do them so I think the real key is to not try and do two things at once and not take work to the climbing wall um, and try not to think about climbing at work um, and then everything gets done properly. That's it for today. All the links to those movies are in the description below if you want to watch the full video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.